How's it going everyone, Nizem45 here with another Star Trek Online tutorial. Last time we covered all the main energy types in game at the time the video was made. Today, by popular demand from the comments on the last video, we will be covering the different types of torpedoes, mines, and other projectiles currently available in Star Trek Online as the time this video was made. As with my disclaimer on the last video, in the future, with more seasons and updates to Star Trek Online down the road, the list in this video may no longer be complete, however, all information and items will still be completely relevant. Before going further, I would like to point out that in this video I will only be covering ship weapons based projectiles, such as torpedoes and mines, and their counterparts. This video will not include any special abilities or universal console weapons that deal kinetic or projectile damage, such as the Spatial Charge Launcher or Nadion Detonators, for example. To start, first let's define what a torpedo is in Star Trek Online. Basically, they're a shot projectile that majors in dealing damage to bare hull, meaning they have a high amount of kinetic damage. Shields highly reduce the damage dealt by most torpedoes and mines, save a few special cases where this rule doesn't completely apply. Mines, on the other hand, are stationary projectiles that wait for enemies to get closer before they can lock on and start to chase their target before detonating on contact. Usually, mines must wait for a target to be within 2 kilometers before activating, but with recent trait changes, this can be increased to 4 kilometers. Torpedoes nor mines are affected by weapons power, and, unlike energy weapons which can fire continuously, it takes a few seconds to reload torpedoes and mines for another shot. Also, while torpedoes can be placed in both fore and aft weapon slots, similar to energy weapons, mines can only be placed in aft weapon slots on your ship. Similar to the base types of energy weapons mentioned in the last video, there are six main types of torpedoes and mine projectiles each. Each type has its own special properties that define how well and what effects it has on its performance. First on the list are photon torpedoes and mine launchers. You've no doubt used these if you even play Star Trek Online, as, except for the Romulan faction, these are starting level projectile types used for any and all new players, and are the first experience you'll ever have with projectiles in the game. Photon warheads explode and glow orange, mostly, and don't particularly have anything special about them to their name, other than being the base torpedo in all TV shows, pretty much. They deal relatively low damage in comparison to other types, however they do have the advantage of having the shortest reload speed of all types, meaning 8 seconds for torpedoes and 15 seconds for mine launchers. Next up is plasma torpedoes and mine launchers. You'll most likely run into this type of projectile on enemies when first fighting Romulans and Remans, and as mentioned before, plasma projectiles are the starting type only to the Romulans, and are given out to any new players of that faction. Plasma projectiles are colored green when shot and explode, and on impact cause a debuff plasma fire on the target's ship, dealing minor damage that ignores shields. Plasma projectiles deal average damage on impact, however, they tend to be a favorite among players due to the fact that you can stack the plasma fire debuff onto enemies, dealing at times massive damage if stacked high enough. Plasma torpedoes take 8 seconds to reload, while plasma mines take 16 seconds. Next is quantum torpedoes and mine launchers. This is another favorite among players. Quantum projectiles are colored light blue when shot and explode and deal average damage, but higher than photon projectiles in general. Thus, they are usually favored over photon types due to the fact that they have a higher damage base, while their torpedoes have the same reload time. Quantum mine launchers, however, take 20 seconds to recharge, making them much longer to reload than photon or plasma mine launchers. Once again, like the photon type, quantums have nothing particularly special to their name that sets them apart from the rest other than the aforementioned. Up next are chronoton projectiles. Consider yourself special if you either use or have seen these used in high-end gameplay before, as chronoton projectiles are usually the least used type by players in game. Their stats are the main reason the cause for this. Chronoton projectiles have some of the longest recharge times, their torpedoes are set at 10 seconds and their mine launchers at 20 seconds, not to mention their damage is below average compared to other types. To only add to the misdesire for these projectiles, the special proc they carry is to have a chance to significantly reduce the flight and turning speed of an enemy, a 33% chance for torpedoes and an 80% chance for mine launchers. Chronoton projectiles are somewhat of a yellowish-white color, with interesting effects on their travel and explosion, which makes the fact they are rarely used all the more sad. 
Next, we have transphasic torpedoes and mine launchers. While these two are not often used, they are seen occasionally in high-end gameplay. Transphasic torpedoes and mine launchers are colored yellow and deal below average damage, however, partially make up for the fact in their special proc, which is an extra shield penetration per projectile. Transphasic torpedoes deal their damage with a bonus 40% shield penetration, meaning they reduce the innate penetration resistance of shields. For example, a penetration resistance is 90% for most shields, and will be reduced to 54% against transphasic torpedoes, which is an equivalent of a bleed-through of 46%. Transphasic mines deal 80% of their damage via shield penetration, likewise. Unfortunately, transphasic projectiles have the same recharge speed as chronton projectiles, that being 10 seconds and 20 seconds for torpedoes and mines respectively. Last of the base types we have are trichobalt projectiles. Now, trichobalt projectiles are the oddball out of the pack as they don't entirely function the same as other projectiles. When fired, they are colored blue. However, trichobalts are slow moving and targetable, and if targeted by an enemy, can be shot down or destroyed. On impact, they deal massive damage against bare hull, the highest of all base types in an AoE effect that will both temporarily disable for 2.5 seconds and push back targets. Trichobalts also function differently when upgraded by bridge officer abilities. For the high yield ability, instead of sending multiple projectiles, trichobalts only send one massively upgraded shot. Similarly for torpedo spread, trichobalts only send one projectile per target, up to three targets. Finally, trichobalt projectiles and mine launchers also have the longest recharge time of any type, that being of 30 seconds for both torpedoes and mine launchers. Now that we've covered the basic types of projectiles in game, let's take a look at the special spin-off types of each kind. Now, unlike energy weapons mentioned in the last video, there are no hybrid projectiles that take traits directly from two specific types. However, some projectiles do share similar abilities to ones not of their type. Returning to photon projectiles, let's start with the biomolecular photon torpedo and mine launchers. Biomolecular projectiles deal more damage towards the undying enemies, and have special proc to moderately reduce a target's flight speed for 8 seconds. Once the flight speed debuff has expired, an additional minor radiation damage punch that ignores shields completely is applied. The damage of this punch is doubled versus undying enemies. Biomolecular launchers, however, only have a 33% chance to apply their special proc on impact. Biomolecular projectiles look like photon projectiles but are colored green instead and have a recharge time of 7 seconds and 17 seconds for torpedoes and mine launchers respectively. These kinds of projectiles are in the 8472 Counter Command's Reputation Store, unlocked at Tier 3, and sell for approximately 20,000 dilithium each. Next we have the Disrupting Photon Torpedo Launcher, previously called the Biomolecular Warhead Launcher prior to Season 9. It is essentially just a modified version of the torpedo launcher that has the same statistics and behavior, but comes with an extra percent 20% accuracy bonus and a 5% chance to activate the Disruptor Energy Weapon debuff mentioned in the last video, negating 10 all damage resistance for 15 seconds. Currently, this torpedo is not available to the Federation or KDF factions, and is only available via episode replay of the Romulan mission Mind Game. Next up is the Enhanced Biomolecular Photon Torpedo Launcher. Now, this is essentially just a modified version of the basic biomolecular photon torpedo mentioned a few seconds ago. It both looks the same and does the exact same amount of bonus damage to undying enemies as before. The only difference is this one comes with an innate 2% critical chance, 20% bonus critical severity, and 10% bonus accuracy. Currently, this projectile is only available via the 8472 Counter Command reputation unlocked at Tier 2. The last photon projectile on this list, and personally one of my favorites in the game, is the Gravimetric Photon Torpedo Launcher. Gravimetric projectiles look like quantum projectiles only colored red. On impact, they have a 33% chance to create a 1 km radius wide gravimetric rift for 3 seconds that deals extra kinetic damage and pulls any enemy near it into it. Essentially, it's a mini gravity well. With a bonus 6% critical chance, and the chance of creating a rift is increased dramatically upon a critical strike, and is a guaranteed chance when used with the high yield ability. This does, however, turn the torpedo into a targetable projectile when used. The Gravimetric Torpedo Launcher is available via the Dyson Joint Command reputation at Tier 2. 
Returning to plasma projectiles, next up we have the Omega Plasma Torpedo Launcher, another favored by some players. This torpedo is unlike most other projectiles, as it is labeled as consumable, though not to worry, you won't destroy this item if used. The term consumable references how this torpedo works, actually. The Omega Plasma Torpedo Launcher has five charges. Use of this torpedo will consume one of the charges, and can fire in quick succession. Once a charge has been used, it will take six seconds for the torpedo to regain another charge that can be fired. When upgraded by the high yield ability, this torpedo launches a plasma projectile similar to that the Borg fire, dealing extreme plasma damage in the process. This projectile also comes with an innate 2% extra critical chance, and is available via the Task Force Omega Reputation at Tier 4. Next is the Romulan Hyperplasma Torpedo Launcher. Once again, this is a very unique torpedo, as it does not follow the basic rules of torpedoes previously mentioned. When activated, the Hyperplasma Launcher will fire a succession of three targetable slow-moving plasma projectiles that deal massive damage on impact. These projectiles do not have to reach the target they will chase down before another series of projectiles can be fired. With an innate 2% extra critical chance, this torpedo launcher is available via the Romulus reputation to buy at Tier 2. Next is the Particle Emission Plasma Torpedo Launcher. This torpedo is only available via the crafting system for projectiles at level 15, or is purchasable via the exchange. This torpedo launcher is essentially the same as any normal high-end torpedo launcher, however on impact it creates a plasma cloud that lasts for 6 seconds, dealing extra plasma damage every single second that an enemy is inside the cloud. Next is the Neutronic Torpedo Launcher. Strangely enough, this falls under the category of Plasma Torpedo Launchers. This projectile, when fired, looks similar to a purple atom, both traveling and on impact. The Neutronic Torpedo Launcher is similar to Quantum Torpedoes in the sense it shares its damage, however, falls under the category of Plasma due to its special abilities. On impact, this torpedo launcher deals to all foes within 3 kilometers an extra amount of bonus radiation damage, as well as negates power transfer rate and subsystem powers to enemies. This torpedo also has an innate 2% extra critical chance and 20% critical severity, and is available via the Delta Alliance reputation purchasable at Tier 2. Last on the plasma projectile list, we have corrosive plasma torpedoes and mine launchers. Boy, Cryptic likes plasma for some reason. This type of projectile on impact has a 10% chance to apply a plasma DOT for 20 seconds and or a stacking damage resistant debuff ranging from 1 to 20 over 20 seconds respectively. Corrosive mine launchers, however, guarantee the chance of applying procs. Also, unlike most other mine launchers, instead of chasing enemies that get near to them, any enemy detected within 3 kilometers causes these mines to explode prematurely. The torpedo in this set comes with an extra N8 6% critical chance. Both of the Corrosive Plasma Torpedo Launcher and Mine Launchers are available individually as part of the Contractual Agreement set via the Lobby Store for 200 Lobby Crystals each. Finally moving away from Plasma Projectiles, we can now move on to special Quantum Projectile variants. First up is the Wide Angle Quantum Torpedo Launcher. This torpedo is the equivalent of a rare Mark 11 Quantum Torpedo Launcher, however, instead has a 180 degree firing arc instead of a 90 degree firing arc as all torpedoes do. This torpedo is currently only available via the Regent Assault Cruiser via the Federation faction and is not obtainable via the KDF or Romulan factions. The Regent class cruiser is priced at 2,500 Zen in the Zen store. Next, we have Thoron-infused Quantum Projectiles. These projectiles are special in the sense that on impact they have a 10% chance to cause the unstable Thoron radiation debuff, which consists of a small amount of radiation damage DOT, a negative 1% critical chance, and a negative 15% critical severity to the target, and to placate the target once every 15 seconds the proc activates. Strangely though, by what I could tell, Thoron-infused Quantum Mine Launchers do not have this proc currently. Whether this is a bug or not is unknown. Thrawn infused projectiles are currently available via the Delta Alliance Reputation Store, unlocked for purchase at Tier 3. Lastly, for quantum projectiles, we have the Tethered Quantum Mine Launcher. This mine launcher does not act like most mines in the sense that when activated, they will follow behind the player, awaiting to detect an enemy. Other than this fact, they have no special abilities to their name and are similar to basic quantum mines. The Tethered Quantum Mine Launcher is currently available as part of the Apex Predator set in the Lobby Store selling for 200 Lobby Crystals. 
Moving back to Chroniton, the first special type of Chroniton torpedo is the Temporal Disruption Device. You may remember seeing this particular item from a Star Trek Voyager episode. When fired, this torpedo is similar to Trico Bolts mentioned before, in that it is a slow-moving but also partially targetable projectile. While traveling once fired, the Temporal Disruption Device phases in and out, making itself targetable and non-targetable at random. On impact, the torpedo creates a 1 km radius explosion AoE effect that deals high damage and has a guaranteed chance to reduce flight and turn speed by 33% for a short time to enemies. This launcher also comes with an extra innate 40% critical severity. Currently, this projectile is available as part of the Temporal Warfare set for sale in the Lobby Store for 200 Lobby Crystals. The Chroniton Flux Torpedo is next on our list, and was originally available via episode replay of The New Link. It initially came with a special modifier that increased its base damage to about between a damage 2 and a damage 3 modifier. Sadly, however, this item has been drastically nerfed in a recent patch, leaving it only with a damage 2 modifier and no longer a unique name. Next up on the list for transphasic projectiles is the Rapid Reload Transphasic Torpedo Launcher. This torpedo launcher is essentially the exact same as any normal transphasic torpedo launcher, however it fires 20% faster, as well as comes with an innate extra 10% accuracy and 20% critical severity. This projectile is currently available via the episode replay of The Cold Comfort. Next we have the Adaptive Transphasic Torpedo. Like the last, this torpedo is nothing more than a normal transphasic torpedo, however instead comes with rarely nowadays seen Borg modifiers, meaning this torpedo does bonus kinetic damage to Borg enemies, similar to how the biomolecular photon projectiles mentioned earlier against Undine enemies. Currently this weapon is available via the mission episode replay of Fluid Dynamics. Next is the Breen Transphasic Cluster Torpedo. Unlike most torpedoes, instead of being an actual torpedo projectile, on impact this weapon releases 10 transphasic mine launchers in a wide pattern around the enemy, which will then activate and act like normal transphasic mine launchers, except they will only do an extra 20% shield penetration instead of the transphasic mine's base of 80% penetration. This weapon is currently available via the episode replay of Out in the Cold. Last on our list of special types of torpedoes is the Vaudoir Cluster Torpedo, and as you may have guessed by its name, this is exactly like the aforementioned Transphasic Cluster Torpedo. The only difference is the Vaudoir Cluster Torpedo releases a total of four Tricobalt mines on impact. This projectile is currently available via episode replay of the mission Revelations. Now that we've considered all the base and special types of torpedoes and mine launchers in-game, there are still a few special select cases of these items that do not fall under any category of the six basic types, and are unique all unto themselves. To start off, we have the Bioneural Warhead. The Bioneural Warhead is a heavily armored tricobalt projectile equipped with its own shields. If that wasn't bad enough, it also has its own automatic anti-proton point defense system to defend itself against nearby enemies once launched. Unlike all other projectiles, you can be at maximum 15 kilometers away from your target before launching, but counterly must be at least 2.5 kilometers away from your target as well. On impact, this projectile acts similarly to a tricobalt warhead and has a 1 minute recharge. Additionally, the anti-proton point defense system on the bioneural warhead can be increased by anti-proton energy weapon tactical consoles. Initially, this weapon was only available to the KDF via the Sukhob Raptor, which sold for 1,000 Zin. However, now players from the Federation and Romulan factions can obtain this weapon via special equipment packs via the Dominion lockbox. Next up is the Harping Torpedo Launcher. The Harping Torpedo is a special weapon that does slightly more damage than a basic quantum torpedo launcher. However, on impact, the Harping also applies a plasma fire DOT to the target that does more damage than a plasma torpedo, and has a small AoE effect in the process. This DOT cannot be removed by hazard emitters, and on expiration, there is a secondary explosion AoE effect that damages up to 10 enemies at once, fully bypassing enemies' target shields. The Harping, however, has a 15 second cooldown and is unable to be boosted by consoles to balance out its power. Unlike other special weapon types, the Harping Harping can also be equipped more than once on your ship, and is available via the Federation mission, the Doomsday Device, the Romulan mission, Tradecraft, and the KDF mission, A House Pursuit. 
Next up is what is, in my opinion, the coolest looking and most difficult to obtain projectile there is in the game, the Thermionic Torpedo Launcher. This projectile is similar to any other torpedo, but comes with a very unique visual style and abilities. The Thermionic Torpedo, when fired, looks similar to three balls of electricity circling around each other in an orbital fashion. Upon impact, the Thermionic Torpedo has a 15% chance to drain 15 weapons and engine power from the target for 12 seconds. Currently, the Thermionic Torpedo Launcher is only available from obtaining the Tholian Recluse Carrier from the Lobby Store for 800 Lobby Crystals or unpacking a Tholian Orb Weaver ship from the Tholian Lockbox. The Thermionic Torpedo also has an innate 20% accuracy bonus and 10 second reload speed. Next is another favorite of mine, and anyone who watches my videos will probably recognize this readily, the Nakura Web Mine Launcher. This mine launcher drops a series of two mines, however, can be upgraded to drop eight via abilities. Upon detonation on an enemy, the Nakura Web Mines will deal physical damage, not kinetic damage, to an enemy, meaning enemies will have no resistance to the damage they do, with a total of 50% shield penetration. This mine launcher will also stun the target for 3.1 seconds seconds upon use as well, and have an extra 4% innate critical chance. The Nakura Web Mine Launcher is only available via the Nakura Strike Force reputation at Tier 2. Next up is the Alachi Subspace Torpedo Launcher. This projectile is mainly part of the Silent Enemy set and is available via the Lobby Store for 200 Lobby Crystals. The Alachi Subspace Torpedo acts mostly like any other torpedo, however, on impact locally disturbs subspace that can temporarily disable ship functions. In other words, it has a 10% chance to disable a ship for 2 seconds. This torpedo also comes with an innate bonus 60% critical severity. Next we have the Concentrated Tachyon Mine Launchers. This mine launcher is the first of two parts of the Ferengi Marauder set we'll mention in this video. The Concentrated Tachyon Mine Launcher acts similar to any other mine launcher, but instead deals impact only to the shields instead of the target's hull. Doubly, on impact, it debuffs the target's resistance to all incoming energy weapon types by 2.5% for 10 seconds. This mine launcher is currently available in the Lobby Store for 200 Lobby Crystals. It is also to be noted that the Concentrated traded POW, as mentioned in the description, is not verified by the Ferengi Commerce Authority and experience may vary. When in doubt, you should first consult the 239th Rule of Acquisition before proceeding to other outlets. Next is the Rapid Fire Missile Launcher. This projectile is considered a torpedo, however it does not act like other torpedo types in most ways. Unlike most torpedoes, this projectile does relatively little damage, in fact only about half of what most do. However, the Rapid Fire Missile Launcher only has a 2 second reload speed, meaning these small amounts of damage can be fired off extremely quickly. To add, this projectile also comes with an innate 20% extra accuracy bonus. Currently, this torpedo launcher is only available via for purchase in the Lobby Store for 200 Lobby Crystals and is part of the Ferengi Marauder set mentioned earlier. Next up is the Tractor Beam Mine Launchers. Once again, we have an oddball mine launcher here that does not follow suit of its weapon type. You may have seen these used by any Romulan or Riemann in NPC, enemy, or friendly ally in combat before. Instead of chasing or exploding on impact, upon it detecting an enemy within its perimeter, these mines will subdue an enemy with a tractor beam, holding them still or slowing them down at very least. These mines will also cloak once activated, meaning they cannot be targeted like other mine launchers. Currently, the tractor beam mine launcher is only available via episode replay of the mission Cutting the Court. And lastly, to finish off this list of projectile types for this video, we have the new torpedo everyone is talking about these days, the new Crystalline Energy Torpedo. This torpedo launcher is probably the most rare torpedo in the game once the current Crystalline Entity event goes offline, as it will no longer be available as reward for completing the event afterwards. This torpedo acts like any other projectile, however, instead of doing kinetic damage, does pure anti-proton damage, meaning it will affect shields just as much as it will affect hull damage. With a 12 second recharge time and a 2% bonus critical chance and 40% critical severity, this torpedo can also be upgraded by energy weapon consoles that boost anti-proton damage or other energy weapon consoles that boost all damage. It should be noted, however, that upon unpacking this torpedo from its reward box, it only comes in rare Mark 11. Currently, the only way of obtaining this unique torpedo is to complete the 14 day long event from the Crystalline Entity event that is currently going on at the time this video was released. If you're watching this video and you still haven't gotten your torpedo, you're out of luck because there's no more time in the event and it's probably over by now, so yeah, that, that kind of, that's the thing. So.
And there you have it, everyone. All 33 types of torpedoes and mine launchers currently available in Star Trek Online at the time this video was made. As I mentioned at the start of this video, with future releases and patches and seasons of this game, this list will no doubt grow and be incomplete in the future. However, this information that has been listed here will remain the same nonetheless. I hope you all were able to learn something from this video just as I had while researching the main different kinds of projectiles in game. Thank you all for watching and the continued support of reaching recently 500 subscribers on this channel. I love making videos for you guys and I'm glad that at least some small way I can make anyone happy with these videos. Thank you all truly once again for all the support you've shown me over the years. I'm Nizem45 and I will see you in the next video.